ਡੇਲੀ ਖਬਰ ਦੇਖ ਰਹੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਦਰਸ਼ਕਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੇਰੇ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਜਾਣ ਕੇ ਹਰਮੀਕ ਸਿੰਘ ਵੱਲੋਂ ਖੁਸ਼ ਆਮਦੀਦ ਸੋ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀ ਫੋਕਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅੱਜ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਨਵੀਂ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਾਜ਼ਰ ਹਾਂ ਸੋ ਦੋਸਤੋ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਮੁਲਕ ਮੰਨਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਜਿੱਥੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਰਾਸ਼ਟਰੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਸੱਭਿਆਤਾਵਾਂ ਵਾਲੇ ਲੋਕ ਰਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਭਾਂਤ ਭਾਂਤ ਦੀਆਂ ਭਾਸ਼ਾਵਾਂ ਇੱਥੇ ਬੋਲੀਆਂ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਕਾਫੀ ਕਲਚਰਸ ਇੱਥੇ ਸੈਲੀਬ੍ਰੇਟ ਕੀਤੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਪੀਸ ਲਵਿੰਗ ਕੰਟਰੀ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਉਹ ਮੰਨਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਪੂਰੀ ਦੁਨੀਆ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਰ ਜਦੋਂ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਸਟਚਰਚ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਟੈਰਰ ਅਟੈਕ ਹੋਇਆ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਵੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮਾਇਨੇ ਥੋੜੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਬਦਲੇ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਫਿਰ ਵੀ ਕਮਿਊਨਿਟੀਸ ਉਸ ਅਟੈਕ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਵੀ ਇੰਨੀਆਂ ਕਿ ਇਕੱਠੀਆਂ ਹੋ ਕੇ ਚੱਲੀਆਂ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਇਹ ਪ੍ਰਮਾਣ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸਾਬਤ ਕੀਤਾ ਕਿ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਲੋਕ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬਸ਼ਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਪੀਸ ਲਵਿੰਗ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਸ਼ਾਂਤੀ ਨੂੰ ਪਸੰਦ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਹੀ ਅੱਗੇ ਵਧਦੇ ਨੇ ਪਰ ਪਿਛਲੇ ਦਿਨੀ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਹੈਰਲਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਖਬਰ ਛਪਦੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਜਦੋਂ ਖਬਰ ਛਪਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਬੜੀ ਵੱਡੀਆਂ ਸੁਰਖੀਆਂ ਬਣ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਉਹਦਾ ਕਾਰਨ ਇਹ ਸੀ ਕਿ ਮੈਸੇਜ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਮੋਹਨ ਦੱਤਾ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਵਾਈਟ ਪੇਪਰ ਜਾਰੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਦਰਜ ਕਰਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਭਈ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹਿੰਦੂ ਤਤਵਾ ਇੱਕ ਅਜੰਡਾ ਚਲਾਇਆ ਜਾ ਰਿਹਾ ਜਾਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਐਕਸਟ੍ਰੀਮਿਸਟ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਿ ਫਾਰ ਰਾਈਟ ਨੇ ਜਾਂ ਫਾਰ ਹਿੰਦੂ ਮੈਥੋਲੋਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਂ ਆਇਡੋਲੋਜੀ ਨੂੰ ਮੰਨਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਵੱਖਰੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਗੈਂਡਾ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਇਹ ਦੀ ਲੋੜ ਕੀ ਹੋਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕਿਉਂ ਇਦਾਂ ਦੀ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਕਰੀ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਉਂ ਵਾਈਟ ਪੇਪਰ ਜਾਰੀ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਿਆ ਤੇ ਨਿਊਜ਼ੀਲੈਂਡ ਹੈਰਲਡ ਦੀ ਰਿਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਕੀ ਕਹਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਹਦੇ ਬਾਬਤ ਪੂਰਨ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਗੱਲਬਾਤ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਮੇਰੇ ਨਾਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਮੋਹਨ ਦੱਤਾ ਜੀ ਮੌਜੂਦ ਨੇ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਮੈਂ ਮੈਸੀ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਵਿਖੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਫੈਸਰ ਨੇ ਤੇ ਲੰਬੀ ਦੇਰ ਤੋਂ ਸੇਵਾਵਾਂ ਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਮੋਹਨ ਜੀ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਯੂ ਔਨ ਡੇਲੀ ਖਬਰ ਕਿਓਰਾ ਐਂਡ ਨਮਸਤੇ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਫॉर ਹੈਵਿੰਗ ਮੀ ਜੀ ਮੋਹਨ ਜੀ ਜੈਸੇ ਮੈਂ ਨੇ ਆਪਣੇ ਯੂ نو ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਸਟਾਰਟਡ ਵਿਦ ਬਿਗਨਿੰਗ ਕਿ ਯੂ نو ਆਪਨੇ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਕਰੀ ਕਿ ਔਰ ਉਹ ਆਪਨੇ ਉਸਕੋ ਜੋ ਰਿਸਰਚ ਦਾ ਨਾਮ ਰਾਵ ਜੋ ਮੈਂ ਅਗਰ ਮੇਨ ਉਸਕੋ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਦੂ to rise of hindu tatva in new zealand sabse pehle to ye bataiye ki what is hindu tatva in 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 your scenario agar aap usko kya jo naam de rahe ho usko kaise naam de rahe ho aur aise research karne ki zarurat kya padi and what made you to you know write this kind of paper Uh, thank you uh, uh, so much it's a brilliant um, uh, question and uh, just to give you a little bit of a context i uh, direct a center uh, called the center for culture centered approach to research and evaluation or care at massey university now what care does is that um, it um, seeks to build what it calls voice infrastructures uh, where communities that are marginalized or disenfranchised can have a voice so uh, for uh, the last 3 years we have been uh, carrying out a project that is actually a global project on uh, experiences of marginalized communities um, um, with racism and what are the effects of that on their health and well-being and right. what kinds of solutions do they see um, uh, to that so as part of that work it's a fairly large project so in uh, Aotearoa New Zealand for instance you know we have been um, uh, working with uh, uh, maori um, uh, communities with pacifica communities with migrant and refugee communities about their experiences of uh, racism and how that impacts their health and well-being but also then what are the solutions to that um, uh, to uh, produce uh, social cohesion and to support uh, their everyday health and well-being so as part of that work when um interviewing um uh, muslim uh, community uh, members one of the things that became quite salient um uh, is uh, the role of um, uh, hindutva so let me quickly define what is um, the hindutva hindutva is a nationalist political um, ideology it's a modern project uh, which really starts in the 1920s if you um, think about sort of what was going on globally with the global rise of uh, fascism so you had um, hitler in germany you had um uh, mussolini so along that period um, the
So um, the, the, the Muslims, uh, Christians, who are constructed as outside of that principle of the Hindu nation, as well as the marginalization of um, um, the diverse communities that are um, uh, sort of brought into that monolithic uh, ideology. So what has happened within the contemporary context and connecting it to El Terwa is that um, you know, one, in our interviews, one of the things we were seeing is participants often saying that the kind of um, hate you see on digital media that is directly connected to the Hindutva ideology um, actually impacts their sense of health, well-being and um, uh, uh, social cohesion. You know, so that is really what got us interested in examining this topic. The one other thing I want to uh, point out, and this is really critical, is that uh, Hindutva is, uh, as a political project, is distinct from the religion of um, um, the Hinduism, which goes many centuries, which is diverse, pluralistic, and uh, which is like a stream that is um, uh, changing and dynamic on an ongoing basis. So in fact, in my work, I argue that the project of Hindutva is a danger to Hinduism because it seeks to impose a monolithic identity. Right, right. Very well said. Thank you for explaining this. Uh, because, you know, just you said that your research you know, it is more about, uh, you know, giving it a political color. Uh, to Hinduism rather than a religion? Uh, I, I, I would actually say it is entirely a political project uh, within a nationalist political ideology that has uh, deep connections to uh, the fascist project, you know? Right. Okay. Okay. So, if, you know, uh, um, if I come to, you know, the reporting of national media, I mean, in particular with NZ Herald, right? So, first they published the news saying, you know, um, Hindu Tatwa, rise of, you know, um, Hindu right-wing extremists. Or uske baad wo reporting karte hai as an Indian origin, right? When it comes to Indian, to, you know, they, 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 they circularize or they, they take the all of the Indian, either they could be minorities or, you know, majorities or whatever, right? So what do you think? So because log abhi confused, hai, ke, you know, what, you know, this white paper wants to say. Kya wo ek sirf ek, uh, you know, Hindu tattwa ki baat kar rahe, the rise of the political Hindu ideology. Jafar, it is all of a Indian because, you know, aham, aise agar titles denge, newspapers mein, we actually welcoming, you know, all over the other people or ideologies in Otteroa in particular and in New Zealand to come and question Indians in, in particular, right? So wo bada confusing, confusing ho jata hai. So what you take on this? You know, beautiful uh, question, and I want to contextualize this a little bit. So uh, let's look at what the white paper is, first right. of all, yeah. um, and make it distinct from the media report. You know, we as academics, we produce papers. And, and, and to be honest with you, our papers, uh, nobody reads them. Uh, they sit on uh, in journals or on websites, and that's that, right? So we have to first question what happened um, the, uh, contextually with the white paper. So the white paper was produced and it was um, uh, put up on the website of CARE in May. Um, in August, um, you know, there was a global conference that was organized by academics, the leading South Asian scholars um, from the top universities and South Asian programs across the globe um, uh, that were really concerned about the rise of Hindutva, both in India, but also in the diaspora. So they called the frame, the conference uh, dismantling global Hindutva. I'm sure you have seen it that um, actually produced um, a, a a large scale backlash from uh, the Hindutva forces and the Hindutva uh, media and social media, uh, primarily in India, but also in the diaspora. So around that time, the center care uh, was um, co-sponsoring that um, uh, conference. And um, within that context, I had, um, uh, uh, I was preparing a talk that I was going to deliver um, on the social media of care and that talk was advertised. Yeah. And um, that's when uh, someone um, uh, from Australia, it's a white yogini, their name is Sarah Gates, uh, picked up the uh, white paper 
and uh, actually started producing that confusion. And they said that uh, Professor Datta is um, uh, criticizing uh, Hindus in New Zealand without any evidence. So, uh, but this is how the disinformation network of Hindutva works. Right. It actually produces that disinformation so that it can actually profit and circulate from that. And that is also how the logics of these digital platforms work. So that when you have disinformation, you connect it with hate, that then starts actually um, uh, going viral. So what had happened with that is that um, uh, gradually then I started receiving attacks. Mm -hmm. And uh, those attacks were initially happening uh, digitally over Twitter, targeting me, targeting um, the, the center care, and targeting Massey University. So they got to a point where I had to lock down uh, my account. And this was also something that was happening globally. So uh, there were academics who were participating in the conference that were getting uh, death threats. They were get, getting rape threats. Women were, uh, people were concerned about their safety. So that first Herald article mm -hmm. comes up within that context. And it is, it makes very clear, if you look at the headline and the uh, description of the article. So now I'm going into the article, right? And of course, you know, I'm not the journalist, I'm not the paper. As a media scholar, I'm giving you a framework of it. So the article then describes very clearly uh, right-wing Hindu nationalism. And in fact, the journalist goes uh, and takes a lot of care in uh, working through and in describing what is going on there and what are the kinds of attacks that are happening. Now, at this point, then what um, uh, happens is that um, uh, the attacks also start happening in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, there are letters written into Massey um, University. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, these letters demand a range of things, but it's based upon that piece of disinformation that Professor Dutta's white paper is targeting Hindus in New Zealand and is therefore um, uh, spreading Hindu phobia. So that's, the, that's a lie. It's a disinformation that it uses. Um, and Massey then um, uh, responds back saying that we support the academic freedom for, uh, of Professor Datta, which is ensconced in the Education Act. Um, so this is also a key point that I want to uh, bring up on your channel, particularly for our migrant communities to um, understand, is that you talked about New Zealand democracy and its pluralism. You also have to understand the principles of academic freedom, uh, how it is ensconced in New Zealand democracy. So uh, you can use tactics of bullying to silence academics in India. You cannot do that in Aotearoa. Uh, because we have policies um, in place. So when Massey responded, uh, but then again, a new uh, um, uh, set of um, attacks started um, uh, coming on. And a lot of that was happening on social media, in, um, or particularly on Facebook. Um, and, and there were groups that seemed to be located in Aotearoa, New Zealand, you know, groups like Hindus in New Zealand, at least that's what their title is, that has fairly large membership and that has, um, the, frankly, quite a bit of um, uh, Islamophobic and anti-Sikh um, uh, content in it. And uh, there were, you know, uh, uh, messages in the group that were specifically targeting me, labeling me. So that second article comes up in that context. Mm -hmm. And if we look at, again, the title of the Herald article, it talks about far-right uh, far Indian nationalists. Mm -hmm. So that is how Hindutva um, uh, troves and digital armies are described in the literature. So the article is very much on target in terms of what it is uh, describing. It is not saying Indians. Mm -hmm. um, it is actually saying far-right Indian nationalists. Right, right. Definitely, you know, uh, uh, Mr. Dutta, you know, when one actually read out or understands, you know, uh, this subject in, 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 in thorough, then one might be able to understand, you know, what this white paper wants to say. But again, you know, um, in, in, in our busy lives, you know, and, and with, a, with a media full of, you know, breaking news coming in, often people just read one liner and then they start, you know, making their own assumptions, which actually has happened here, what I can see from your narrative, you know, here, you know, logo on itself, line, and they feel like, you know, they have been targeted, 
you know unlikely we jo hona nahi chahiye tha like painting all indians with the same brush but again you know hamara aapse baat karne ka maqsad bhi yahi tha to understand or you know to see what's the root here to hum jaan paaye ke asal mein baat hai kya uh moving on to the next next one can so, i can i respond to it a little bit harmit ji mujhe thoda sa add karna hai isme ki uh, agar wo aap uh, paper articles ko padhe don't know so there is actually nowhere uh, targeting indians and i think that point is really important um uh, to be made in fact if you go into the article i even take much pain to say that hindutva is not hinduism it's a threat to the pluralistic values of hinduism so i want to hold that up the other thing i also want to say is that jo galat fehmi logo ki hoti hai the uh, misunderstanding that actually doesn't happen naturally it yeah. that disinformation is being cultivated and fed by the hindutva forces and that you have to understand that that there is a propaganda cycle that is going on here there are propaganda entities including uh, some local diaspora media uh, that actually are spreading this disinformation and in doing that they are completely misreading the article to agar aap ye poocho ki iska solution kya ho sakta hai as a communication scholar to main do baat bolna chahta hu ki one is people have to cultivate their critical literacy हम जिसको बोलते हैं कि कुछ अगर आप देख लो जैसे हम ये व्हाट्सएप पे मैसेज पा लेते हैं एंड आई गिव यू एन एग्जांपल ये कोविड के टाइम में यू सॉ लॉट ऑफ दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन की जैसे इंडिया में और इफ यू आर कनेक्टेड टू इंडियन व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप की मुस्लिम्स ने ये कोविड फैलाया इंटेंशनली नॉट दैट वॉज डिस इन्फॉर्मेशन बट दैट डिस इन्फॉर्मेशन इज स्ट्रेटेजिकली क्रिएटेड Okay. वो ऐसा नहीं कि कहीं से आ गया किसी का पॉलिटिकल और इकोनॉमिक एजेंडा है कि वो डिस इन्फॉर्मेशन को स्प्रेड करे mm. तो लोगों के लिए ये जो क्रिटिकल लिटरेसी है ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि mm. मैं ना ये ले लू कि ये जो कुछ छटाक से बोल दिया और उसके ऊपर मैंने जंप कर लिया बट लेट मी एक्चुअली थिंक थ्रू एंड लुक एट वॉट इज गोइंग ऑन दैट्स वन द सेकेंड थिंग आई वॉन्ट से इज अट देर इज एन इम्पोर्टेंट एलिमेंट फॉर पॉलिसी मेकिंग हि because policy makers really need to think through what they are going to do with this kind of disinformation or platforms that are spreading disinformation kyunki you know platforms like facebook and i don't know if you saw the recent uh, story on the uh, facebook whistleblower where the whistleblower pointed out that one of the largest sources of disinformation was connected to the rss in um, india which is tied to hindutva and spreading disinformation and facebook knowing this didn't do anything really because it profits from the virality of this information and how it uh, spreads hate quickly and that draws in uh, lots of people you know so in that sense it's also a policy making question for our policy makers what and how they're going to respond to these platforms right and and uh, uh, mr doctor what you in, in your perspective you know what why what you think what is the major motive you know behind these kinds of you know hindu tatwa you know propagandas we 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 generally talk about we have actually been speaking about you know say political profits and everything but how that will be you know uh, more re- relative to new zealand to agar iske piche ka jo motive hai you know to what the motive will be hum hame samajh aata ki it could be you know chalo india mein hum ja ke dekhte hain where where you know they you know hum dekhte hain ki elections jo hote hain ya fir you know jo policies lai jaati hain they could have been uh, polarized by these kinds of you know uh, motives but usko agar new zealand mein la ke dekhe because new zealand actually have been trying to play a very fair um, you know uh, role when it comes to minorities or majorities right to hum us 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 um, vichar dhara ko us motive ko hum new zealand mein kaise fit kar sakte hain ya fir aap kaise fit karke dekh sakte hain that's what a brilliant question to pehli baat to main ye bolunga ki um uh, ye jo ideology ke jo propagandist hai jo isko phailate hain uh, like that's a study we should go to hindus and nz group or um, other spaces and um, other media platforms and ask them why are they spreading this hate and uh, disinformation and what do they have to benefit from that in of terwa Uh, particularly in a context that is so plural and so democratic ye to hame sawal puchna chahiye dusri baat i want to say is that uh, the diaspora us wahan pe jo hota hai that is very much connected to what happens in um, india 
तो ये जो हिंदुत्व वाला पॉलिटिक्स इंडिया में है दैट इज इंटरलिंक्ड विथ Uh, the ways in which uh, things are organized in the diaspora all the way from uh, funding and uh, finance uh, trails there's a, a lot of research on that to actual support for hindutva on the ground in india that gets funded by and supported through uh, the diaspora teesri baat ye hai dekho ki india mein to jaisa dekho abhi because the academic space has been so targeted Mm-hmm. अगर आप um, इसके बारे में कुछ बोलो या लिखो देन यू आर ब्रांडेड एज एन एंटी नेशनल और वो तो बोलते हैं कि आप पाकिस्तान चले जाओ आप पाकिस्तानी um, हो गए um, तो तब जाके हम जो डायस्पोरा में साउथ एशियन स्कॉलर्स है जो अलग अलग से डेमोक्रेसीज में है तो ये हमारा रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी भी बनता है कि हम इसको स्टडी करें इसका uh, जो क्या चल रहा है उसको दिखाए तो उसी के जरिए तब हमारे आवाज को भी तो साइलेंस करना चाहिए ना सो वी आल्सो हैव टू बी साइलेंस्ड तो वो साइलेंसिंग का मैकेनिज्म आई सी दिस एज अ मैकेनिज्म ऑफ साइलेंसिंग दैट सो दिस डिस इंफॉर्मेशन कैंपेन दैट इज सॉर्ट ऑफ रियली हैज क्रिएटेड दिस बोगी मैन एंड दिस लाई दैट प्रोफेसर दत्ता इज हिंदुफोबिक एंड इट इज सर्कुलेटिंग इट इज बेस्ड अपॉन दैट गोल ऑफ साइलेंसिंग दैट डिसेंट एंड एंड आई आई विल टेल यू व्हाट आई थिंक दैट देयर इज आल्सो अ फियर इन द हिंदुत्व फोर्सेस कि अगर प्रोफेसर दत्ता या केयर या कोई एकेडमिक न्यूजीलैंड में ऐसा काम करते रहे तो वी विल बी एक्सपोज एंड आई सी दिस इज एन अटेम्प्ट टू एक्चुअली सॉर्ट ऑफ प्रिवेंट दैट फ्रॉम हैपनिंग राइट राइट अगेन थैंक यू फॉर दिस क्लेरिफिकेशन एंड यू नो एंड एंड मिस्टर दत्ता व्हाट यू थिंक अगेन यू नो आफ्टर दिस यू नो द पब्लिश ऑफ द आर्टिकल और आफ्टर योर रिसर्च now what next do you think or do you have been actually been um, you know um, cooperated by the officials in new zealand to you know to find solutions how we can keep you know this hate or this new negativity away from aotearoa or new zealand in particular because just say we know you know we we in new zealand we live as a multicultural um, yes. you know, society right and and again a uh, second question bhi aap main sath hi mein kar deta hu so have you been uh, able to portray your views or your thought process to i um, mean you know, authorities of indian origin in new zealand i would say high commission of india have you been able to portray your views to them because uh, agar jaise hum baat kar rahe to india ki taraf se they are representative here ha na to agar agar hame kuch problem aati hai so they are our official sources so have you been able to you know reach them as well ke bhai meri baat karne ka matlab ye tha but isko aise pesh kara ja raha hai main as you as you say i am not against hindu ideology but it is it is it is about the hindu tatva which is a, a propaganda being spread by people who wants to get a benefit out of it to mere do sawal hain pehla sawal how the new zealand um, you know uh, concerned um, entities are taking this your paper and second have you been able to have a dialogue with the high commission of india in new zealand to clarify your stand great questions so let me come to the first question and and really go to a solutions based framework right. so you're asking what next and how do we build solutions so the first thing we want to say is that um you know we are uh, we have to recognize that aotearoa new zealand is a settler colonial state that means that we have to recognize the territory of waitangi and that means that we fundamentally have to anchor ourselves in kaupapa maori and um, the notions of um, indigeneity and how that shapes what role we ought to play as migrants here in this culture and in this context so um, you know i've been doing a lot of work with um, uh, maori communities with communities on this idea of social cohesion and from these communities the idea is very simple they say that it's about aroha it's about love and about welcoming so yeah. then in terms of the question of solution really i think that it is about creating spaces where communities can have a voice and those that are disenfranchised and marginalized can have a voice harmik ji ek cheez dekhi aap maine ye research karte hue and and as a result of this research one of the things i've seen is that i have found tremendous solidarity 
from uh, uh, Muslims who have said that, Professor Dutta, thank you for bringing attention to this because we have been trying to bring up this Islamophobia connected to Hindutva for so long and we haven't been heard. We, have, we feel like we have been hitting a wall. I've also heard from uh, Sikhs who have said that within the context of the farmer protest in India, uh, there has been rise of anti-Sikh sentiments. So, the framework is a culture-centered approach. The main question is how do we create spaces where uh, these communities that are experiencing this hate and marginalization can have a voice. Or dominant approach hai, multiculturalism ka ya interfaith ka wo kya karta hai ki wo Indian community ko pura, it paints it in a broad stroke and then it creates some spaces for some community leaders to come in and be the voice of the community. So usse kya hota hai ki there are no spaces left for those that feel marginalized, for those that experience the hate, for them to actually have a voice. So, our theoretical work in this center is that we say that we have a voice infrastructure that we have to make the marginalization hate experience that we have to make a solution because in the culture center approach we say that we are not expert we are a Savarna Hindu middle class upper middle class Indian immigrant a model immigrant so yeah. it's not for me to come in and give a solution, but it is actually for us to create spaces where communities can have a voice and say that this is what is going on and for not uh, that not to be uh, put under the carpet or brushed away or silenced because right. somehow we want to talk about social cohesion by ignoring those things. Yeah. Aapka dusra sawal about um, the uh, Indian High Commission. I think that I'm open to engaging them. Of course, you know, my work is uh, based with communities in Aotearoa. So that is always my starting point. So, as we have seen, someone has asked me, why did you not make a media plan for this paper release? So, I, I laughed at that and I said, Deekho, hum log hai academics. So we do our work, we put it up, um, we don't really strategize. Uske piche koi sinister goal nahi tha ki, chalo aisa kar ke ye kare, ye strategy bana ke aisa kiya ja. But having said that, given the conversations that this paper has generated, I think that's a great thing because it is drawing attention to the kinds of issues that need to be talked about. Uh, so the question is for the High Commission to really think about how it is going to serve all Indians, especially those that are experiencing these forms of marginalization, because that is very real. And how is it going to create a space for that? So if they have invited me or care, I'm sure we would be very open to dialogues and exploring that. Thank you so much, Mr. Datta, for being with us and clarifying the whole thought process and you know your findings um, um, uh, with your with your with your uh, research. And we are asking that if we go ahead, you know, if something comes, you know, like we will be um, keep asking you to come and you know answer our audience. Thank you so much for your time and all the very best. Thank you uh, so much. And I just want to uh, wrap up Harmikji by just, you know, giving this one note ki, uh, uh, hum, agar, um, uh, koi bhi faith tradition ko soche, to mm. us faith tradition mein yehi bola jata hai ki hum kaise miljul ke sake to uh, create a harmonious world. So yeah. agar hum wo sawal pe aa jai, I think a lot of our problems will be solved. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Bye-bye.